Hey guys, so uh, today we're going to talk about the Wemos D1 Mini, a uh, miniature chip here that is Wi-Fi connected and it's using the ESP8266. Um, I've written a web service, or actually I've taken a web service that somebody else, or the example code, and uh, modified it heavily. So I am running a web service on these chips now and I'm using them to control stuff around the house. I got some test ones here. I hooked it up to my office lights and did a test with it last night and you can check that out now. But, uh, I have the relay connected up to my lights in here. There we go. On, off, on, off, on. Pretty cool, huh? Um, I've got two individual D1 minis running the web service code seen on my desk over here. I'll get a close-up of those in a second. I also wrote an iOS app here where you can uh, tap and add your own um, hubs. You put in the, the uh, IP address on your local network and then it shows up like this on your screen. Um, once you've got those connected and you tap on this it will query the the uh, the D1 minis and it will ask for a list of the devices that are supported so uh, if you'll see when you tap here you get a list of them that are connected here you can tap to turn them on and off you can hear the relay kicking on and off as I tap um, and so I've got one of those connected up to an 8 relay bank um, go back here and this is returning the same thing because I currently have um, both of these Wemos chips programmed saying they support the same devices even though only one of them has a relay bank connected to it. So uh, I will be sharing the source code for the iOS app. You can uh, click on the link in the description. I'm also sharing the source code for the web service uh, that I am running on the Wemos. So you can also find the link to that in the description. It's on my GitHub. Um, I will be editing the iOS app heavily over the next, I don't know, week or two, maybe more, uh, as I work out uh, more features and functionality to add into it. Um, and I will also be doing some editing to the source code for the Wemos, uh, for the web service that's running on there, although that seems to be working pretty good. Uh, so yeah, let's dive in. So here we have uh, one D1, uh, D1 Mini hooked up to a relay. I had this one connected to um, my office light just by uh, putting the, the wires for the switch in here. It works really well. Uh, and then I have this eight relay bank that you've seen in some of my other videos. I've got another D1 Mini here. And I've got this one is not connected to a USB. This one's connected to the USB power. This one I took an LG uh, power supply from an old cell phone and I have a proto board here that I have hardwired into the 5 volt ground or 5 volt and ground there so I can zoom in for a little bit but closer here. There we go. So you can see I've soldered the red to 5 volt, the black to ground and then I have these control pins hooked up to uh, D1 through D3. Four, I have D3 disconnected because it was giving me some issues and I also have D8 disconnected because that was also giving me some issues. Um, so I've got six out of the eight relays connected and uh, the, the script um, sets these pins here to output and then sets them to low to start. Um, and then the iOS app will uh, report the status for each of these because it, the uh, when it requests the devices from the from the Wemos, the Wemos will check to see what the status of each of these uh, relays is and then it will report whether it's on or off. So um, what I'm going to do now is open up the iOS app. So here we have it. Um, mini hub is this single one here so I'll tap on that one right now um, this will report that uh, a bunch of these are, are available to switch just because of the way I've got it set up now currently relay 4 uh, corresponds to the LED on here so we'll go ahead and turn that on and off 
Sometimes it takes a second. Let's see here. I've got some error handling to do on this still. Um, if the request doesn't go through, then it will stay on. There we go. Oop. Yeah, now the requests are going through. Now let's turn it off. There we go. Um, and then we'll jump back over here to the Office Hub, which is this larger relay bank here. And we'll turn on relay 1, turn on relay 2, 3. Oh, 3 is uh, not connected at the moment. Um, six, four. There we go. So we have a little network latency here. Um, five, six, seven. So three and eight are not connected. So now we can uh, turn all these back off again. Come on. So we still have four is still on. There we go, and seven is still on. Um, I also need to synchronize it because the uh, app is not always in sync with this, so this will say it's on even though it's off. Um, because I am just assuming that it goes through, so I need to write a completion handler that will uh, not update the state of the button until it actually gets a response back from the, the Wemos. Um, <clears throat> so, that's working pretty good there. Now, this is also still working with um, voice control. Uh, I don't know if you remember that from my one of my previous videos, but... I set up my um, FOMO.py script to communicate with this via the uh, HTTP service instead of the local one. So the Raspberry Pi is still running that script. And uh, when you talk to um, the Echo, it will process that and it will send a web request to here. So uh, Alexa, turn on office lights. Office lights isn't responding. There we go. Alexa, turn off office lights. Office lights isn't responding. Yeah, our network's being a little wonky today. Alexa, turn off office lights. Office lights isn't responding. Okay, well it came on but it doesn't want to go off. Alexa, turn off kitchen lights. Okay. Alexa, turn on kitchen lights. Okay. Alexa, turn off kitchen lights. Okay. So, there we go. Um, that works pretty good. So I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of the app here, and I'll show you what it does. I've got it running in the simulator here. Um, if you click here, you can enter in um, basically a friendly name. Um, so this will be in like home, office, domain or IP. Um, this should be the IP address that your Wemos device has been assigned on the network. Uh, so you enter that in. Scheme is HTTP, unless you're running HTTPS, which I haven't set it to support. So this will be a main relay bank. I'll just put that in there for now. Say done. I'll save it. I'll show it here. And if your device is connected, it will go and it will uh, load up any devices that you currently have listed in your um, Wemos server, which is what this code is. Uh, it's basically returning this list as JSON. Um, kitchen lights, office lights, and these are all unassigned, so you would update. Like, this is the name that gets returned that's displayed uh, here. This is the identifier, which is currently displayed here, which I'm going to take out. Kitchen lights 
which is here. Uh, and then this is basically the status that says whether or not it's high or low. Uh, and then this I'm not really using yet, but uh, will be later. So this is the, uh, the Wemos script here. You'll put your network SSID here, whatever the name of your network is, you put your password here, and then whatever the host name you want. Like So on your mobile device, when you assign a name, it's like going into your settings, your general, uh, and then just setting, change the name of your device on your, on your uh, mobile device. So just pick a name here. Um, I've defined a struct here that basically encapsulates a device. So name, pin, identifier, description, status, and then the type. Um, a convenience function to convert this to a JSON string. Configure pins, this is part of setup. So when it first launches, you'll see down here, configure the pins, configure serial, configure Wi-Fi, configure server. So that just runs through these uh, configuration here. Configure the pins, we basically specify the pins in the array here that we want to set up as an output, which we do here. We set the pin to low to start. Configure serial, we basically specify the baud rate that we're gonna communicate. Configure Wi-Fi, it sets up the Wi-Fi with the uh, SSID and password. Here, I'm changing the host name uh, and then confirming it. It logs out to the serial port um, that the host name that you set up here, uh, it's setting it on Wi-Fi and then we go ahead and connect. Um, here and then you configure the server so this basically sets up your web service or your web server you say that uh, when somebody requests root it's going to run handle root which is this one here we basically just send a hello from ESP8266 when someone requests a slash device it calls handle device so what that does is creates a device list this is the uh, list of devices that are supported for this Wemos that you're running it on, which so if you install this on multiple Wemos, you'll want to update this for each one. Uh, I got to figure out a better way to do that, but that's the way it is for now. If server arguments is zero, basically if you are not sending an argument, which is um, switch back to the simulator here. Um, so you hear the relay kick on and off, maybe. So when we do the request here, if you are not including any arguments here, it assumes that you want the list. So in that case, it will return this JSON to you. Um, if you do include arguments, then it will assume that you are trying to update the device. So it'll go here. Uh, if the args are zero, it'll run through the device list and generate this JSON response, which you see here. Uh, otherwise, um, otherwise, what are we doing? Um, <clears throat> oh, here we go. So, uh, yeah, if we have no arguments, uh, then we run through this and we return uh, the JSON. Otherwise, we have an empty JSON string. We grab the argument and the uh, value, which in this case is d2 equals 0. And then um, if it's zero, we set the pin low. If it's one, we set the pin high. Uh, we say that we have not found it. So we basically iterate the devices and we're checking to see if D2, which is here, is available. We're comparing the identifiers, which is this column here. Um, if the identifier is equal to the one that we're iterating, then we will say that we set it and and uh, create this message, we will update the pin. Uh, so the pin that is specified here in this column, we were going to set that pin with the value that was returned, either zero or one. Um, it's going to be either low or high because if it's zero, then it's low, otherwise it's high. It doesn't matter what you send. Um, then we say, yes, we, it's found, we break. Um, if we have not found it, then we set the message to device is not found. Otherwise, we are returning this message here. Um, and we're sending a 200 response uh, just as text. Uh, I'll probably update that to JSON or something, but for now it works. Um, this was some that I was previously using that I'm not using anymore. Uh, handle not found basically just generates a 404 response. 
Uh, and then on loop, we just do handle client. So it just checks to see if, uh, if the server has a response. And if it does, then it will try to um, process our um, uh, endpoints that we specified here that are supported. So that's pretty much it. That's, that's how the app works. Um, you can see here. Yeah. So you have your list of devices here. You can turn them on or off. Relay three, I forgot I don't have connected. Relay two, go back to your hubs. You can add another hub. This is not connected to anything at the moment, but, uh, um, that's how it works. The source code for the iOS app, basically, um, we have some models that are defined here uh, that defines the devices that we receive from uh, the API. Uh, the hub basically is the Wemos device and the hub can have multiple devices, which is what you see in the simulator. Uh, this is your hub and the hub can have multiple devices here. Uh, the hub serializer basically just stores it in uh, persistence so that we can reuse it. I could use core data, but uh, just decided to do something simple. Um, Table view cell, this is a device list, so that shows up, oops, that shows up here. This is our device list, so it defines this cell here. Um, I have view models for each of the devices. Uh, the new hub view controller, this is the controller that is displayed when you add a new hub. Um, the view model handles saving it. Uh, the hub list controller handles the collection view that displays all of the uh, all of the hubs on this screen here and what happens when you tap on them that's this that gets run here um, here's the view model for that here's the view model for the ooh, this one's really simple this is a, the collection view cell basically configures it with the name and the image we're not doing anything with at the moment so it just it uses the same image for everything uh, the device list view controller here. Um, and the view model UI provider that basically just provides a convenient way to instantiate view controllers. We have an API router which handles uh, generating requests. We have device list and device action. Those are the two requests that this app makes. They both hit the device, but one of them has parameters. So uh, in the case of the device action, we're saying we're sending it a, a, a key, the identifier and the value, zero or one. And so we generate query items and append them um, for that. Uh, the API here is this configuration. So when you create a host, or I mean a, uh, a hub, it has a scheme and a host and that gets used to, to define um, how the request gets sent. And then this is the network request, this handles um, getting the device list, updating the device, we have an identifier and the value that gets sent, we process requests, I need some more error handling here. Um, we log the response on the console. So um, that's that's most of it. Uh, so. All right, you guys, that pretty much sums up this one uh, with the Wemos D1 Mini. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys build with this. Uh, if you use the scripts or uh, get any of these, I got these off uh, AliExpress. I got some off of Amazon as well. On uh, AliExpress, I think I was paying like three to four dollars a piece for these. Um, on Amazon, it's uh, roughly like eight to nine dollars a piece. But um, yeah, love to hear what you do. Uh, leave some comments, like, share, subscribe. Um, love to hear from you. Thanks.